Welcome to Staying Relevant, the bonus episode hosted by two bestest of best pals and a couple of superstar legends. Us. Or Sam Thompson and Pete Wicks, as we're otherwise known. No, we're cracking America. Um, I will be swearing I am drinking an innocent smoothie. Um, it's orange with bits. Um, there's no vodka or anything in it, but if you don't like that, go f*** yourself. Uh, we also have chocolate fingers open, but I think they may curdle with the orange juice, so I'm going to leave them alone. Um, this is the bonus episode, which is Thursday, which means you'll be able to watch this on Sunday on YouTube. The main episode, which was out on Monday, you'll be able to watch on Friday, so that makes it a Monday, Thursday, Thursday Friday, Friday, Sunday. Sunday. Um, as this is the bonus episode, it's all about you, which means we hear from you. It's your opportunity to speak to us directly for us to answer your shit or listen to your stories and whatever else so if you want to get involved then make sure you email staying relevant at insanityhq.com um, make sure it's a good story but anyway follow us on tiktok snapchat instagram and youtube at staying relevant podcast uh rate review do all that crap if you don't get it by now then you obviously don't listen enough so sam do you want to do the first one i love it okay so the first one is a listener letter yeah here we go so this is from jody and his subject is the wig incident. Which automatically makes me nervous. I sounds like a doozy and I like it. Yeah, because Sam and I probably could do with wigs. Oh no. <laughs> Mine for the front of my head, Sam's for the back. Hello, Sam and Pete. Firstly, I'd like to say I've been a fan for many years now, from Sam in the main Chelsea days to Celebs Go Dating, and even loved a bit of reality news. Yes, come so on. Sounds like she's a Sam fan because she hasn't mentioned anything I've done there. It's reality news. Uh, Let's go dating. Which you were both in and made in Chelsea. So she's obviously a big Sam fan. Well, she's not a Towie fan, is she? Let's be honest. No, I don't think anyone is. <laughs> I sat in the car listening to listener Danny talking about the tampon incident. It reminded me of an incident I experienced whilst at work quite some years back now and thought I had to share. I have worked in the dental industry for many years now. I used to be a dental nurse. And as a profession, I must say, I thought I'd seen it all. From an elderly patient having the runs and trailing poo to the dental chair oh, all the way to the the toilet, bless her heart, to experiencing hygiene issues with the patient so much so that I was literally gagging so much the vomit was close to escaping my mouth. However, this event I'm about to share will stick with me quite possibly forever. Fuck, I didn't realise all those things happened in the dental studio. Here she goes. One fine sunny day. Oh, God, I like this. One it, fine... I know. It's like, telling a story. Like writing a book. Yeah, go on, Jody. One final sunny... One final... One fine sunny day working with a wonderful dentist. I called my next patient in. She was a lady that clearly took care of her appearance. So much so, I remember thinking how beautiful she was. We did the checkup and all went well and treatment was done and the dentist kindly took off her glasses. Now, I'm not quite sure why she took them off or why she took them off, but she did. The next minute, I look up after hearing hearing a screech from the dentist who now has the patient's wig in her hand and is jumping around in panic and frantically waving it round. Now, one would think the dentist would just apologise and hand it back, but no. In a state of panic, she starts trying to put it back on her head. I am, by this point, in hysterics and hiding my face behind my face mask, unable to attend to the poor lady for fear of losing my job. Instead, I hide in the corner in the hope it ends really soon. And all I can say is, Thank fuck for face masks. After what felt like a lifetime of screeching and flailing the wig around, the dentist finally hands it back to the poor lady apologising. The patient then leaves quite distressed and I don't blame her. What I want to know, what would you have done in this scenario to handle wig gate? Kindest regards, Jody. Well done, Jody. I like that. Very well written. Well written. Well written. We like that. Nice. Um, Sam, I imagine what you would have done is put the wig on yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, wee. Hey. Yeah. Oh, it's a lovely shade of brown. Yeah, just start slapping her on the head and that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't mean, what would you do? If I had taken it off, I would have gone into awkward Sam mode, I think. I, I, and I imagine just a lot of like, I'm really, really sorry. I'm really sorry. And then try to put it on. You probably put it on backwards at that point. And then, because what was he doing? He was waving it round. Well, I imagine he was just like, oh, shit, I've got a fucking wig in my hand. I don't imagine he was going, woo. What kind of wig do you think it was? But, I, what other types of wig? What, well, I sorry, know. I don't understand the different types. Oh, what kind of hair wig? Are we talking about a perm? Are we talking about a sleek down? What are we looking at? I don't, I mean, I, I've got no idea. I imagine in my head it was a long blonde wig. But with, do you know what I think fringe? he's done? I think, because she said that she, he went in to take the glasses off. So I imagine, 
right? It's attached. The, the, the glass is there, and he, as he's taking off, he's taken that off as well, yeah. and being like, "What the fuck is this?" But the, 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 the weird thing for me is, if you start, you you would feel it pulling against the wig. So at that point, you'd stop and put the glasses back on and go take them off of me. Yeah, but see, what if he literally went like that, just whipped it off quickly? Why would you whip them off so quickly? Why would you? Because it would be gentle the way you take. You don't just whip glasses off someone. Yeah, you gently take them off. Like, you gently take it off. Surely you would have seen the wig slipping. Scalp's moving. Why is this happening? Yeah, that's unusual. <laughs> um, but no, I like it. Wig gate. Interesting. Well, I, I, I don't know why all of these things seem to happen to our listeners. <laughs> uh, I've got to be honest. There seems to be like a... It's, it's weird, isn't it? Like uh, We just seem to have a weird group of listeners that like inserting and, and taking things off when they shouldn't. Do you know what I quite rate from And Jody. also just awkwardly... I'll be honest with you, I think our listeners need some sort of social etiquette training because you're all a bit fucked. <laughs> in the best possible way. Well, not really, no. You get yourselves in situations I don't think you need to be in. We get ourselves in situations we shouldn't be in. Yeah, but we are fucked. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Not openly. Do you know what, though? I, I, I quite rate Jodie here because what she's done is she's thought about her own job. She's literally oh, so Jody yeah. literally went, I ain't having any of that. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. on your fucking own, mate. And to be honest, if you want a witness statement, I saw the whole fucking thing and actually it's going to give me a... It's, I'm actually going to get a raise and a promotion. Yeah, so, because I wasn't part of the wig whip. Yeah, yeah. I like the way she took herself to a corner and went, this is all you, mate. That's what you would do. If it was me, you would hide in the oh, corner. I would sit back, arms crossed and go, crack on. <laughs> Whilst I'm flying the wig round. Um, do you think you'll be embarrassed if that happens to you when you get your wig? Do you know what? I was looking at seeing something on Instagram, right? And you can stick hair to your head. Well, well, I recently did something. Um, oh, I don't know how to describe this where I can actually say it. Well, anyway, I recently did something where I was talking to someone about how lovely their hair was um, and didn't realise because uh, it, was, it was a guy who did have a fucking great barnet. I was like, fuck me, like... That's a fucking great barnet. Um, and then he went to the toilet and his girlfriend said to me, he's just had that done. And I went, oh, what, you mean he went to Turkey? He went, no, 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 it's a system. I went, what do you mean a system? Um, hair systems are real things. They're like new age wigs now for gents. I presume women can get them as well. But they basically last for six weeks and they basically <gasps> stick them to your head using glue and you can wash your hair and you can just treat your hair like normal and then every six weeks you replace it and it's called a hair system and um, let me tell you it did not look like a fucking wig it was really crazy. but apparently yeah you can shave it and, and, and every six weeks it's about 600 quid um, I'm saying this like I've researched yeah, yeah, yeah you know a lot about this um, and, and yeah and it's like you can you, you can wash your hair you can shower you can do normal and you would, you would never know that's amazing yeah and then, and then basically every six weeks they just peel it back off and then they cut your hair, so you put the wig on and they cut your hair around it to a certain thing, but it's like an actual, it's a specific... Wait, I have a question then. So what if I shaved my ball patch yeah, at the could, top and they, would they just put a fryer tuck bit on the... Like, no, like no, 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 no. So, so what they'd probably do is shave your entire head oh, I don't know if I at do the that. top, not sides, so then you'd look like a complete fryer tuck, save that bit, and then they'll, they'll glue down this entire <sighs> fucking wig and then you can have it cut into that. To be honest with you, yours looks more like a wig than it does natural hair. At the minute, because it's so straw-like and dry. <laughs> dry. I mean, like honestly, it feels like if I put my hands through here, it would snap. <laughs> um, but that's basically what you can do now. Um, but, Should we do it? But also, a lot of women wear wigs, even women with hair. It's not just about looks; they want to change their hairstyles. A lot of women actually wear wigs. We're going to do that. Fuck, the, we're not getting transplant. We're just going to glue them on. No, I'm, because every six weeks, I'm not going to, to have... Yeah, we fucking, are. I'm not having the carpet refitted every <laughs> Yeah, week. yeah, we are. And we'll do it together. It will be something that we do. It will be a bonding experience that we go and do every six weeks. How, why, why is it you hear a new thing and then you think it's something that we have to do? <laughs> like, originally it was just fucking going to Turkey and that was bad enough. And, and now it's like, no, 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 we'll just, we'll just <gasps> glue one on. I forgot to tell you. I've spoken to a producer about doing a documentary about me and you going to Turkey. I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, no, let me, just, let me just pitch it to you. It's, no, 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 don't pitch it to me. So... What we do oh, he's gonna pitch it is is we take a film Fuck crew it. with ITV, right, and we go to Turkey and they film us getting hair transplants. Why? As a documentary to show men that it's okay. We can. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I'm, like, I'm not clinging to anything just for a documentary. Well, I pitched us both, and the guy was really keen. How much are they pay him? <laughs> Here we go. He was keen. He was literally, if you guys want to do it, we should do this. Well, how about you go, and I'll see how you get on. 
And I'll just, you know, if it goes well, I'll think about it. My query, though, just before we move on is what happens if, like, I don't know, if you're busy and you're like, shit, I'm coming up to six weeks. It's like five and a half weeks. And you're like, and someone's like, jump in the pool, Steve. And you're just like, oh, shit, okay, fine, I'm going to jump in the pool. It just comes off. Or like a little I, bit, it's like wisping off. I don't, I don't think it comes off. I think what happens is the hair, because obviously it's not real hair, starts to, it just starts to look a bit tatty. Really? Even, oh, really? Hmm. I don't think it would just slip off. Because that would be bummer. Imagine that. No, imagine I don't, I don't you're on the beach and a wave takes you off. I don't, really... I don't imagine you wake up in the morning next to your missus and she goes, oh my God, there's a rat. Oh no, it's your wig. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Um, but yeah, listen, you never know. We we'll look it. into it. We'll look into but it. But yeah, so in answer to your question, I would have done exactly what you did uh, and Sam would have tried the wig on. <laughs> I hope that answers your question, Jody. Well written story. Thank you. Thank you, Jody, very much. We love you and appreciate you. Next up, Caitlin. Subject. Called my ex during sex. Oh, shit. These are the ones I like. Bloody hell. Hi, Sam and Pete. I wanted to let you in on a very embarrassing situation that happened to me a few years ago that I think you and the listeners will find very funny. Now, Caitlin, I just want to say you're the first one in a while that hasn't said how much they love us first. Uh, slightly disappointing. All right? We always appreciate uh, our egos being fluffed. So maybe in your next letter, you could just put how much you love us first. <clears throat> My ex and I had been together for almost five years, but we decided to separate. Within a few weeks, I was on Tinder and decided to meet up with a few people. I met this one guy and we hit it off instantly, meeting up every day. As it was the start of the relationships, we were at it like bunnies. Any hour of any day. However, this one specific time, we're in such a rush to get it, to, oh, sorry, we're in such a rush to get to it. Most of our clothes stayed on and my phone was lost in the bed. After we had finished the lovemaking, I managed to retrieve my phone for the sh from the sheets underneath us. To my shock, I had a message from my ex. Oh. For context, my ex worked nights, which meant he slept during the day. When I looked at the message, to my shock, I realised I had called him during the sex and woken, woken him up. He quite clearly wasn't impressed. The worst part about this was it was he listened for 19 seconds. I would as well. I don't know why he listened for so long, as I'm pretty sure it was obvious what we were doing. Later on, I realised he was still in my emergency contacts, uh, contacts so must have somehow called him, called him through this whilst we were having sex on top of my phone. The worst part is the other contact I had in my emergency contacts was my mum, dad, and my ex-boyfriend's mum. So in hindsight, I'm grateful out of the four contacts, it was him that I called. To conclude this story, me and the guy who had sex are still together. It's been almost four years and we live together and are planning on having a baby. Oh. So not all bad. Would you have hung up if this had happened to you? No. Nope. Well, let me tell you, if Sam had done that, then what you would have heard in 19 seconds was the start of sex, foreplay, <laughs> coming, and was that okay afterwards? <laughs> so you would have got the full rendition through the 19 seconds. The full package and the um, tears. Don't forget the um, tears. Oh, yeah, and, and yeah, and it could have been from him or her. Um, but yeah, you would have got the full rendition. Would I have hung up? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't know. Sometimes it could be, do you know what I mean? Some people have got that as fetish, listening to you fucking, do you know what I mean? You never know. I what would have, would you have done? Li listen to it and, and, and just been like, God, this sounds like they're having a terrible time. <laughs> I would have, to make myself feel better, I would have listened to it for about the 19 seconds you did. I imagine if you'd got to 20 seconds, Sam would have gone, God, he's a machine. Yeah, God, wait, he's going on for, he's, oh, Jesus, listen, God, he's going on for he hours. He's really given her an absolute Bloody thing. hell. No wonder she left me. Fucking hell, it's going for a marathon. Um, I, I mean, I quite like that story. Actually. I think no, but I genuinely would have listened and been like, and, and listened for like disappointment. I, I know Sam very well, and he's a bit of a voyeur. On that's why he loves reality TV and everything else. Sam would have listened to the entire thing. He would never have put the phone down, and you'd have been twenty-seven minutes in, just him sat there. <laughs> One hundred percent, you wouldn't put the phone down. No, I wouldn't, because I would also, as I said, I'd be looking for, I'd be listening for disappointment. If it was Zara, I'd be listening, going because you're so used to that during sex. No, I'd be like, I'd be like, yeah, it sounds like having a horrible time. I'd be like, she probably hates that. No, what Sam would have done if he'd heard that, and it, let's say him and Zara broke up, which isn't going to happen because they get married, but um, let's say they broke up and then it was someone else. Sam would have listened to the whole thing and then he would have called me after and went, and then they did this. Yeah. <laughs> Sam would have given me a full rundown afterwards. Um, but like you said, it could have been worse because the other emergency contacts were your mum. Now, actually, no, that, that would have been fine because mum would have gone, all oh, that was a bit awkward. Dad would have been time. awkward, um, especially if you refer to the person you're fucking as daddy. But the worst one would have been ex-boyfriend's mum, I think. 
Oh, I don't know. I think ex-boyfriend's quite savage. Do you think that's the worst out of the four? Well, yeah, because he might be sitting there going, they've done that on purpose. Yeah. They've done that on purpose. And she, right. and also, to be fair, 19 seconds, if you think about it, one, two, three. I'm genuinely, I, 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 I would I would have listened. And, and I'm not going to lie about that because, you know, I would have wanted to. Why are you that. saying it so seriously? <laughs> because I'm really thinking about it. Have you done this? No, I'm really thinking about it. I'm trying to think what I, I would then message and be like, sounds like you had a horrible time. <laughs> I'd imagine being like, it sounds... Someone faked it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not as good as when we used to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Missionary. Over and over again. Um, okay, good. Another good story. We yeah. like that. Come on. Nice. on. We love um, listening to Letty. So though. for context, I would have hung up. Sam would have listened. Um... And then debriefed me on it. Yeah, I definitely would have called up Pete for sure, being like, "Shall I call her? Shall I not?" Yeah, what do I do? Does that mean she's over me? I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. I always do that. Always with Pete. Um, I feel bad for the boyfriend now. Actually, he's probably a lovely stand-up bloke. Well, I don't care. <laughs> But good news, um, you're planning on having a baby and you're still with um, the good fucker, the 19 seconds lad. I'm not going to call him 19 because I imagine it went on longer than 19 seconds. I'm just judging that based on Sam's performances. But um, but yeah, nice. Happy endings. We love a happy ending. Literally. We do. We absolutely we do. We do love a happy ending. Congratulations though. on the four years. And Tinder as well. Yes. Look at that. Who doesn't love a Tinder baby? Thanks ever so much, Caitlin. That's it for the bonus episode. Happy days. We Fucking love job that done. though from you. Flew through that. Uh, catch this on Sunday on YouTube where you'll be able to discuss, uh, you'll be able to see Sam discussing his wig. Oh my God, I actually had to fucking, literally yesterday, I had to, I had to sun cream my head. Did you? I sun creamed my head for the fucking first, well not the first time, but like I haven't done it much and I, and I put factor 30. What, just on the back? On the top. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Oh no, and Zara saw it and she was like, what are you doing? I went, it's just going thin. I was like, you don't want to burn up top. No, you don't want to because it becomes very itchy. Yeah, exactly. I've already got dandruff as well. Yeah, no, Sam has got an awfully crusty head. I do. I've got dandruff. I don't know why. It's really unusual because Sam's, like, to be fair, I'm going to give him his due. He's quite a hygienic man. But he's just always got a really crusty head. I don't understand. He's just got a very dry head. I think that's why your hair's like straw. It's so brittle. But you just, just up top. And you even do, like, I know Zara put oil and stuff. Zara's, oh, this is so bad. Zara's taking me. To have a hair, like where you go to a place to basically treatment. Yeah, a hair treatment. Yeah, I have treatments. I need to have shave my hair to moisturise your head. Yeah, you. Yeah, it's it's really weird. She literally said to me, "We were having a shower together, sitting down," and she literally goes, "She was like, Sam, I'm going." Because if you don't know what they have, um, a bench in their shower. Um, it's not in every one of the bathrooms. It's only the one in the east wing. Uh, because in the West Wing, it's just a, um, a 30 foot wet room that they have that has a wave machine. <laughs> a wave machine? Um, but in, 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 in the East Wing, they have a sit down shower. We sang in the shower today. What did you sing? Uh, we sang uh, the cat, oh God, we sang the cat song. Meow, 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 and then it goes meow, 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 meow. And then it, we start again and go meow, 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 Thank you for listening to Stone Relevant, the bonus episode with me, uh, me meow, meow, and Sam meow, meow. Uh, Pussy Thompson, <laughs> um, as he's now known. Um, if you do want to feature in one of these episodes, because we love hearing from you, and also two very well-written stories mm. today. Well done, Caitlin. Well done, Jody. I love the uh, grammar in it, and I really love the beginning, middle, and end of it as well, and setting things up really nice. Yeah, so Sam loved it. Um, then please make sure you email Stone Relevant and Sam E H. Com. This will be available to watch on YouTube on Sunday. Monday's episode will be available on YouTube tomorrow, which is Friday. So that's Monday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. No one did it with me that time. I did it quick. I'll try that again. It's Monday, Day, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Okay, everyone's bored of that now. Um, <laughs> apart from me. Um, yeah, watch, subscribe, rate, review, do all of that crap. Um, Ta-da. See you later. Motherfucker. Asta Hawego. Yeah. Asta fucking fuck you, slag. No, no, no. No. No? No. Too far. No. Okay. Stay. <laughs> we love stay you. Stay now, baby, if you've got to Baby. Go. Stay now, baby. Don't say it's the final day. Won't you stay another day? Stay now. Staying Relevant was an Insanity Studios production.